What's up, everybody? I'm back. We're back. Talking sobriety with Hall Morrison. Not sure what episode this is, but I got my good friend Tim Rison in the house. This guy, uh, how do you explain yourself, buddy? We've been friends a long time, but you are an MMA fighter. I am. At best. A professional mixed martial arts fighter. How long have you been fighting? Um... I would say on and off for about seven years in between my bad choices into thinking I can drink and do drugs successfully. <laughs> I think that's what every addict thinks they can uh, thinks they can do. So obviously we're on talking sobriety show, so this isn't really about fighting. This is more about no. how we overcame drug addiction, alcoholism, that whole deal. People kind of already know my story, your story, the reason you're here. I think you, you have a very amazing story, how you overcame drugs. I, I would say you're still battling addiction like every day, along with me, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm new again, you know what I mean? I'm new again into recovery. Uh, how did you get into drugs? You still like rewind unless you start from the like, get-go? Mm, all right, well... Mm, I wrestled in high school, I was like a jock, so I like partied with the older kids, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, it wasn't too, nothing too crazy, drinking and smoking weed and stuff, chasing girls, all that nonsense, and then, uh, uh, you know, I dibble dabbled pretty much with everything in high school, nothing too crazy, and then when I graduated, I had a full ride wrestling scholarship to a college, and uh, my life was good, so I thought, let's party for three months till uh, I go to college. Yeah. And uh, that didn't work out so good. I was 17 years old, and about a month before I was supposed to go, I ended up in the hospital because I uh, snorted uh, too much Coke. Uh, and I was probably like 130 pounds, and I snorted like an eight ball in like two hours, and I had oh to have. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I had to have my best friend drive me to the hospital. And, uh, you know, respiratory failure, all that. And like your heart almost stopped? I couldn't breathe. I couldn't catch my breath. Were you the dude back in high school that you always went biggest, you got drunker than everybody? I mean, did you know you were, let's say, an addict at an early stage? You know what? Not really, because I was never a drinker. Like, really, like, drinking was never my deal, ever. Uh, I didn't like the feeling of, like... Not being in control, control. Yep. you know what I mean? I'd rather just like get stoned and be a retard and eat Cheetos at a party, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, then uh, d be a re retarded drunk person and you know, you embarrass yourself. It's I just, get it. You know what I mean? So after you had the respiratory failure, what well, happened after I, that? I got out uh, and uh, I just did too much and uh, like the next day I was doing coke again, right? But uh, I went to treatment the very first time when I was 17, and I was there with people that were older than me. You're too young. Yeah. You know, you know blonde hair. Yeah. And my dad had just been diagnosed with Crohn's disease, and I was in there, and he had a heart attack, and I was like, I'm over it. I'm coming home after 10 days. I have Crohn's disease, too. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I never heard anybody else that had it. They said yeah. I had it a long time ago, but I have no <laughs> symptoms, so I think maybe I don't know. Um... My dad had Crohn's disease diagnosed probably like over 22 years ago and they didn't even know what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was all test. So I, I left and then I met a chick. Mm -hmm. uh, the first love of my life. And I cleaned up, uh, cleaned up just smoking weed and uh, I started wrestling again in junior college. Yeah. And I was with this chick, just, you know, smoked weed and uh, did amazing in wrestling, got another scholarship and, uh, this chick, you know, don't go, stay with me, you know, all that shit. And I got suckered, and uh, I stayed, she broke up with me, whatever. It's not a biggie. And then I went home, I thought my life was a wreck, I got like a normal job. And then, uh, that's the very first time someone said, hey, you want to try this? And it was crystal meth. And I was like 20 years old, and that's the first time I tried it. And my dad was real sick at the time, so the feeling of my dad dying went away. The feeling of my heart being broken went away. Like that. That's yeah. how most addicts yeah. get like into that. it. All your, yeah. You think all your problems are going away, but yeah. really just piling them higher yeah. and higher on the side. 
But in your head, right. you think all the problems are gone. It did what it's supposed to do. Drugs and alcohol do what they're supposed to do. They make you not feel. That's what it does. That's what it's supposed to do. Like, I have a feeling problem. I don't like the way I feel 99.9% of the time. So I found that shit to make me feel better and not feel at all, right? I'd have to say, this is a very niche YouTube channel. I think everybody watching this, you're not going to watch this if you're not a drug addict or you're not seeking for help. So I think everybody out there understands that. I 100% understand that. So moving forward, when did drugs get worse and worse? You know what, man? Uh, I smoked that stuff for, you know, three years, destroyed my life, came home one day, and my uh, mom and dad said, hey, we're waiting for a phone call, either you're dead or in jail. Yeah. I, the only thing I could get out was, let me sleep for four days, <laughs> you know? So I slept for four days, I woke up, and I looked at myself in the mirror, man, for the first time, I was 23 years old, and I started crying because I could not recognize my own face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, you know what, I need help. So I went to uh, treatment when I was 23. I went to Riverside and, uh, you know, I was going to give it all I got. And uh, I stayed in recovery for 13 months. Uh, something happened at nine months that uh, because I was just doing a half-ass program and not doing what they say, my dad died when I had nine months. Oh. And... Uh, you know the deal, I was with some chick, whatever. That's the story of my life. But either way, man, my dad died and I didn't, I wasn't given the thing at my all, you know, and I didn't have, really have a program, so I got loaded a little while later for a couple days and I knew that wasn't the solution and I went to the treatment again. A lot of people don't understand, like, you can go to rehab, you can go to the most expensive rehab, but if you're not invested and you're not, uh, in nope. the program, nope. you're just going with the flow nope. of things, it's not gonna work. You nope. need to like dive in there with your tail between the legs, yep. listen to what they say, yep. and like really do it. Well, and when people are in the shit, you cannot help somebody until they want to help themselves. 100%. You cannot. Me and you've had conversations when I've struggled on the phone, and you know you can't help me. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to help myself. And it's funny because. You saw me, one of the few people that saw me before I went into treatment this last time, you saw me, you know yeah. what I mean? And when I think about it, it, bring, it gets me a little teary-eyed because the person I became, man, and look I saw in your eyes, and uh, it just, I'm so glad I decided one more time. Well, be, before this, that's when I... That's when me and my yeah. partner met you. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Me for a long time. That's when we started hanging out. We were we sponsored you yeah. with SMBG. You were yeah. winning all your fights. Yeah. You were on top. Dude. Yeah. You were going to every MMA fight. You were winning every yeah. single time. Mm -hmm. You were on top. And then uh -huh. what you just talked about is when you went back downhill, and I couldn't believe it. But I know there's a yeah. lot of issues. Well, on. I thought I am I not a cusser now. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I thought Sorry, I, mom, in case your mom's watching. I have two daughters, so I thought I was a fucking cool guy, man. I thought I was different. I thought I was a cool guy because I was All fighting. All the lights on you. you well, think? no, I was fighting MMA. I wasn't even a pro yet. I just thought I was super fucking cool. I got it. Everything in my life that was happening, I did. No one helped. Yeah. Just being a self-centered person, and uh, you know, I got humbled real quick, and uh, I got. I, loaded and um, you know the, the last time I got loaded yeah uh, you know I was four and one as a professional I just lost my first fight and uh, I got hurt or something and I, I, I was keeping secrets man I was doing shit I couldn't talk about and I was keeping secrets from mm -hmm. people you know and I ended up getting loaded and uh for a, a little bit, you know, and uh, the last two weeks uh, of my using and drinking, uh, just the, the last week, man, uh, I ended up uh, going to the person I bought drugs from uh, and had been stealing from, you know, and uh, ended up sitting on a couch with someone in front of me holding a bat and someone sitting next to me, uh, holding a gun to my head and uh, the only thing I can think about were my two daughters 
And uh, wow, Tim, like, like, all because you wanted to drink and use one more time and you thought you could do it successfully. And now you're looking at a barrel of gun from yeah. your drug dealers that you're stealing from <gasps> right after you had your kids. I have two daughters. <laughs> and it's sad because you're such a good guy and it's just so sad when I was seeing you go through that. It's just... How drugs take over uh -huh. such good people. It's so, not people like no. you're a gang member, you got no, no family that are addicted to drugs. No. Dude, you raised good. Yeah. I was raised from a yeah. cookie cutter town. My that, family never yeah. drank, and it just, they take over. That's the thing that's a trip. It does not matter where you come from. You could come from a Leave It to Beaver family. Or you could come from, you know, a family that's just not so well off, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so what happened to me was uh, I, got, I got let go or whatever, you know, and I, I went home and I called my friend Seth and I called him and I said, uh, hey, I need help. I'm going to, I'm going to fucking die. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he got me into treatment one more time and I went to treatment and I started doing work for the first time in my life. I started doing work on myself and really, it's an inside job. For a decade, I've tried everything possible to fill the void. Because add, addicts and alcoholics, we have a void. Yeah, yeah, a void, yeah. right? And I have tried everything outside myself, except doing the work the program asks you to do, you know, mm -hmm. recovery program. So I went in there, man, and I did a lot of work on... Uh, Yourself. Yeah. And, uh, and I can tell them. Yeah. You're calling me every day. I'm going yeah. to meetings. You're into it. Yeah. Do you think, I like to ask a lot of people this, I debate this, do you think going to AA meetings, the 12 steps, is the only way you could do it to stay clean? I feel that uh, recovery is recovery. Mm -hmm. And I feel uh, Whatever personal recovery program works for you that keeps you clean and sober and keeps you in recovery and, and, and your life's not unmanageable and you have a good life and, and uh, sure man, like your program is your program, my program is my program. I feel if you go on right. and, and you think that you got this no. and you don't bring up sobriety, no. you just think I'm normal, I'm not going to talk about you're gonna go back out. This is the yeah. twelve steps in meetings. One hundred percent work every mm -hmm. time if you're in it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just like to hear it from other people what you think. You know, but the bottom line is you have to make sobriety number one every single day you wake <laughs> up, and you have to know you're a recovering addict, and you need to give back what was given to you. You need to help others. Exactly. Yeah. Bottom line. This is you took the words out of my mouth. The Cliff Notes version that I'll say for me. Yeah. For me. Everything that's good in my life is because of God, because of recovery, mm -hmm. because of the steps, yep. and because helping somebody else. As long as I let God run my life, and as long as I help somebody else mm -hmm. stay sober and stay clean and help them, my shot at staying clean and sober is really good, man. 100%. And I, I want people out there to know that, like, just getting clean, no. you don't have to be religious. Like, a lot no. of people, you don't have to be like, hey, the only way to get clean, you have to have, have to go to church or everything. No. I, I'm religious. I don't go to church. Right. Pray every night. Right. To my higher power. Right. My deal. I know I was like, I don't know how I'm here right. doing this, just living, so I pray every night. But I'm just saying, you don't have to be, I just don't want to scare people saying like, no. you got to be religious, you got to go no. to church, and you know. Because here's the deal, bro. Here's it's my deal. deal. Yeah. What's good for right. you, what's good for you guys out there, but you need to get in the program and you need to well, get yeah. the program. Here's the bottom line. <clears throat> Recovery is a spiritual program, and any 12-step meeting you go to, it's a spiritual program. For me, my opinion, the difference between spirituality, which is recovery, spiritual, spiritual, mm -hmm. and religion is, the cool thing is, is the program, is, it's a spiritual program. Spirituality doesn't have boundaries or rules or regulations. So Colin Scummy Morrison's deal works for him. Tim Rison's deal works for him. 
right? Yeah. Religion is, you know, it has its own deal. So it's cool because you can find your own higher power and it works for you. And you have an amazing life, bro. Mm -hmm. You have an amazing life. You know what I mean? So obviously you're doing something right in your life that's working for you. I'm doing it for me. You know, and other people do it for themselves. It's all, if church is your deal, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Cool. <clears throat> Dude, that's that's rad, man. So I feel like you're back. How many days sober are you? Oh, I I uh, I have over uh, uh, nine months again, and, uh, and you had a oh yeah, pretty man, big time. Oh yeah, I I've, I've had some years, man. I've Relax, had... and I think with your story, what I want to bring you on is um, cool. I want people out there to know if you go out, uh-huh. get sober, and you go out again, and mm-hmm. then I think. You feel so down about yourself. You feel like yep. maybe you're a failure. You let so many yeah. people down. You just gotta pick it, pick it back up, and keep moving, and just keep yeah. moving. You know, just don't get down. So I mean, how do you tell people that? Because a lot of people, they don't want to try and get clean the second time. Cause they feel so bad about they relapsed the first time or something. You know, it, it's not a bad thing. I got you. You need to pick it up and just keep moving. How did you feel? How can you tell people out there? Because I know you. You know, relapse a couple times. How did you get over that? What? How do you tell people? So, this? here's the deal, man. D- uh, drinking and using drugs has never, never made my life better. Mm. And any situation that I've ever encountered in life and life shows up, drinking and using drugs never made that situation better. It made it worse, right? So, it took me to realize within my soul, Mm -hmm. within my soul, man, that I cannot drink successfully or use drugs successfully. Once I accept that fact beyond a shadow of a doubt and I surrender, you know, like we hear a lot, once I surrender, because I'm a professional fighter, right? The only fight I've never been able to beat is drugs and alcohol because they whoop my ass every time. <laughs> every fucking time. Bad. <laughs> and uh, so if I know within my inner part of my soul that I cannot drink or use drugs successfully and I just let it go and then I find a group of people that have the same thoughts as me and they sh- have been sober and clean longer, yeah. they show me how to do it, man. And I have to be humble enough to listen yeah. and do what they do because... Right? This is just me, common sense. I get hit in the head a lot, you know? Mm-hmm. I've done a lot of drugs, but if someone's at where you want to be at in life or a certain, you know, aspect, why don't you go ask that person, hey, how did you do that? And when they say, this is how I did it, try it yourself and see what happens. I think a lot of drug <laughs> addicts out there, they think they know everything. Yeah. I know with me, I thought I know everything. And that's the biggest thing. If you want to turn your life around, you want to get sober, you have to get humble yep. and you have to put your ego down and you have to listen and you just have to, like I always say, tail between the legs, mm-hmm. white flag up and listen to what they say. Mm-hmm. You can go to the most expensive rehab, but if you're not oh. ready and if you think you know it, you're not going to do it. So, <laughs> Tim, I'm so proud of you, man. So you got a fight coming up. I do, man. It, it, it's crazy that for four years I tried to do recovery my way, my own deal. No higher power. Everything's good in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Self-centered little punk, right? So God showed me different. And, uh, you know, I ended up in treatment and I got out. And I told myself when I got out, you know what, dude? Do it one time. One fucking time. Not your way. Yeah. And uh, within nine months, man, with a lot of help. Including you, including a lot of men, man. A lot. I got a lot of help. Uh, uh, I, I I signed a, a contract, uh, uh, a fight with Bellator. That's with huge. Bellator, January twenty sixth at Pechanga. I'm gonna be fighting for Bellator, the second biggest MMA promotion in the world. Uh, I just signed a fight contract for, it and uh, that's not from me. Uh, I didn't do that. God did that. My friends, my family. I'm a product of my environment. You know. It shows that you can get sober. You yeah. Know, you get a goal and you did it, dude. I'm Never give up. So proud. Never of you. fucking give up. Good luck so. in the fight. You know, I'll be there, man. Uh, <gasps> anything else you want to tell the people out there? No, nah, man. You know what? Just never give up hope. Uh, never, never, never give up. As long as you're clean and sober, you always have a shot. And if you make a mistake, man, just Ask for help. Ask for help. 
and uh, you know, listen, and, and I guarantee you that your life will change if you if you if you give this recovery thing a shot. I, oh, I, I guarantee it. So. That's a perfect closing. Cool. Thank Dude. you, Mister. Got me. Thank you guys. This guy's a legend. Check him out. Next fight. What's your Instagram, really quick? Uh, Tim Bad Moon Ryson. Tim underscore Bad Moon underscore Ryson. And just Tim Ryson on Facebook. I'm not that cool. I don't have like Twitter. This guy's a legend. This guy made it. He's beating drug addiction. You guys can too. So thank you guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.